Yeah, so our lesson today is on the slope formula. This is just another way to figure out the slope of a graph if you don't have the graph in front of you, if you just are given two points on the graph, okay? So first we're going to start off with our friend Aiden. And to find the slope of that graph, he found the rise to be 6 because he's going up from 10 to 16. So that rise is 6. The run is 8 because he's going from 8 to 16. Okay, so 6 over 8 simplifies to 3 fourths. Now, let's say he didn't have the graph in front of him. If he was just looking at those ordered pairs, 8, 10, and 16, 16, look at the rise that he got. He got 6 for his rise. What could you do with maybe 8 and 16 or 10 and 16 to get 6? So if we look at our y values, if we subtract them, 16 minus 10 would give us 6. Okay, and then if you look at the x values, um, I'm changing colors on this. So our x values, if we subtract 16 minus 8, we would get 8, which is what he got for his run. So we could have found the rise by subtracting the y values and the run by subtracting the x values. So I'll give you a couple seconds just to copy that down. So you can subtract the y values to find the rise, subtract the x values to find the run. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're basically going to be using two points to find the slope just by subtracting our y values and subtracting our x values. Okay, and this is called our slope formula. So we've talked about how slope is rise over run, but that's the same thing as the change in the y value over the change in the x value. So if we don't have the graph to look at so that we can't count our rise and our run, we can just subtract our y values to get the change in y, and then we can subtract our x values to get the change in x. Okay, and you can subtract them in either order, like you can pick whichever point you want to start with, but you want to make sure to start with that same point both times. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So number one says to use our slope formula to find the rate of change. Remember, rate of change is the same thing as slope in each representation, okay? So if you're given a table, we need two points from that table. So I'm just going to pick 0, 5, and 1, 5.5. And then if we're using our slope formula, we're going to subtract our y values and then subtract our x values. For some reason, it's not liking when I do that. For some, I think it's this button that's messing me up. Sorry, guys. Okay, so I'm going to subtract my y values. So a lot of people get messed up when there's a table because since the x's are on top in the table, they want to subtract their x's in the numerator. You always put y over x, just like we did in seventh grade. So y values always get subtracted first in the numerator. And you can subtract them in either order. So I just usually like to do largest minus smallest. So I'm going to do 5.5 minus 5. And then you want to make sure to subtract your x values in the same order. So since I started with 5.5 for my y value, I want to start with 1 for my x. So when I subtract my x's, I'm going to do 1 minus 0. Okay, so I've got 5.5 minus 5 over 1 minus 0. Let's see if that's the same thing I had here. No. Okay. So we'll just keep going. So 5.5 minus 5 would give us 0 0.5. And 1 minus 0 would give us 1. So we have 0 0.5 over 1, which is just the same thing as 0 0.5 or 1 half. So that slope would be 1 half. And you would have gotten the same thing if you had picked two different points. So like if I had picked 2, 6 and 0, 5, then if I subtract 6 minus 5, that gives me 1. And 2 minus 0 gives me 2. So I would have gotten the same slope. So you can pick any two points. As long as you subtract and then simplify, you're going to end up with the same slope. Okay, so for number two, let's pick two points again. So I'm going to do 322 and 62.8. I just usually pick the first two. Keep it simple. 
and then we're going to subtract our y's. So it's y2 minus y1. That just means you're subtracting the y values over x2 minus x1. Okay, so 62 minus 22. And then in the denominator, I need to make sure you're subtracting the same order. So I'm going to start with 8 minus 3. So 62 minus 22 is going to give me 40. And then 8 minus 3 is going to give me 5. So that simplifies to 8. So my slope would be 8. And that's the same thing they did here. They subtracted 62 minus 22, 8 minus 3, 40 over 5. All right, so number 3 is a graph. So honestly, guys, when I'm given a graph, I usually just count my rise over run. I don't use my slope formula because it's faster for me to count and draw a triangle. But... If you wanted to use your slope formula, you can just write your ordered pairs. So this one would be 0, 80. And then this point right here would be 5, 50. So if we're doing our slope formula, we would subtract those y values. So 80 minus 50 in my numerator. And then you've got to make sure to start with the same point. So in our denominator, we're going to have 0 minus 5, which is going to give us a negative answer, but that makes sense because this is a negative slope. It's going downward. So 80 minus 50 would give me 30. And 0 minus 5 is negative 5. 30 divided by negative 5 would give me negative 6. So my slope would be negative 6. And that's the same thing we would have gotten if we had done our slope triangle. Our rise would be negative 30, and our run would be positive 5, so it would still simplify to negative 6. All right, guys, so now we're just using the slope formula to find the slope between two points. I kind of like when they just give me two points better than the table, because I don't have to pick my points. They're given to me from the beginning. Okay, so... Slope formula says we subtract the y values, so I'm going to do 7 minus 4, and then subtract your x values. And you got to start with the same point, so I'm starting with 1 minus 2. Let me see if that's the same order they did it in. Yep. Okay, so 7 minus 4 would give me 3. 1 minus 2 would give me negative 1, so that would simplify to negative 3. Write that out just so you can see it. 3 over negative 1 would simplify to negative 3. Okay, um, I'm going to skip and do a harder one, and then I'm going to let you all go back and fill in the rest. So let's do number 8, since I see those fractions. But it's actually not going to be bad, because when I start subtracting my y values, I'm going to have 3 fourths minus 3 fourths. And then for my x values... I'm just going to do 5 minus 2. Now, 3 fourths minus 3 fourths is just going to give me 0. So I have 0 over 3. But 0 divided by anything is just 0. So that slope would be 0. All right, guys. So I want you to pause the video and try to work these remaining problems using the slope formula. So you're subtracting your y values in the numerator, subtracting your x values in the denominator. And whenever you're ready to check your answers, just press play. Okay, so for number 5, we would be subtracting our y values. So that would be negative 2 minus 0. And then 3 minus negative 1 in the denominator. So you have to be careful with that. Negative 2 minus 0 would give us negative 2. And then 3 minus negative 1. Remember, those would change to positive. So it would be 4. Negative 2 over 4 simplifies to negative 1 half. All right, number six, we would be subtracting 5 minus 3 in the numerator and then 5 minus 1 in the denominator. 
So five minus three gives us two, five minus one gives us four. So we have one half for our simplified slope. I feel like we've gotten a lot of one halves on this sheet. Okay, number seven, I'm gonna subtract three minus zero in my numerator and then 3.5 minus 4.25 in my denominator. So three minus zero gives me three. 3.5 minus 4.25 would give me negative 0.75. So if I divide three by negative 75 hundredths, I should get negative four for my answer. So that would be the simplified slope. All right, and then number nine, I'm gonna subtract two minus three in the numerator. If you did three minus two, that's totally fine. You just gotta make sure to start with this point in your denominator. So 7.5 minus 7.5, so in our denot, I mean numerator, we'd have negative one, but then 7.5 minus 7.5 is gonna give us zero in the denominator. And we cannot divide by zero, so this would be undefined for the slope. If you get a zero in your denominator, it's gonna be undefined. All right, looking at number 10, the table shows the relationship between the number of songs Alicia has purchased and the cost of her purchase. Find the rate of change. Okay, so find the rate of change or the slope just means we need to pick two points. So I usually, like I said earlier, I like to pick the first two. Okay, so I'm going to be subtracting $6.24 in my numerator minus $3.27. And then in my denominator, I've got to start with this point again, so 5 minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to subtract, I'm using my calculator, 6.24 minus 3.27, and that's giving me $2.97. 5 minus 2 gives me 3, and then I'm going to divide. $2.97 divided by 3 gives me 99 cents per song. All right, table shows the distance that Andy and his friends have left on their road trip based on the number of hours they've driven. So finding the rate of change, I'm gonna start out with those first two points. And we always talk about miles per hour. So I'm gonna do miles and I'm gonna subtract those. So 240 minus 360 over 3 minus 1. Okay, so 240 minus 360 gives me negative 120. Two, 3 minus 1 gives me 2. So negative 120 over 2 would simplify the negative 60. That just means they have, for every hour they drive, they're losing about 60 miles remaining. So they're taking 60 miles off of their trip for every hour that they drop. All right, I want you to try number 12. It says to ship a two pound item, it costs six dollars and nine cents. Seven pound item costs eight eighty four. So our two ordered pairs here would be two pounds cost six dollars and nine cents and then something that cost seven pounds, or something that weighs seven pounds costs eight dollars and eighty-four cents. Okay, so in my numerator, I'm gonna subtract eight dollars and eighty-four cents minus six dollars and nine cents. And then in my denominator, I'm gonna subtract seven minus two. So 8.84 minus $6.09 gives me 275. 7 minus 2 gives me 5. And then if I divide 275 divided by 5, I get 55 cents per pound. All right, and then these are just some slope applications. We're going to kind of skip around on this. So, 
high temperatures of a city during the first part of June. Find the rate of change between June 1st and June 6th. So that means we're looking at this point for June 1st and this point for June 6th. So temperature is gonna be my Y value. So I'm gonna be subtracting the temperatures in my numerator. Those are gonna be my Ys. The date is gonna be my X. Okay, so 76 minus 72 in my numerator, six minus one in my denominator. So 76 minus 72 gives me four, six minus one gives me five. So that rate of change is about 0.8 degrees per day. If I'm looking at June 6th and June 8th, that means I'm not looking at this point anymore. I'm looking at these two. So this time I'm going to be subtracting 84 minus 76 in the numerator and then 8 minus 6 in the denominator. So 84 minus 76 gives me 8. 8 minus 6 gives me 2. 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. So that would be 4 degrees per day. So during which time intervals did the temperature rise faster? That's going to be between June 6th and June 8th. All right, and then number two is very, very similar. So I want you to pause your video and try number two. You're finding the rate of change between the different weeks. So first we're looking at week zero to week two. So the weight would be 219 minus 224. And then we're doing two minus zero in our denominator. If you did the opposite order, that's totally fine. If you did 224 minus 219 in your numerator and then zero minus two in your denominator, you're still gonna get the same answer. So 219 minus 224 gave me negative five over two. And that simplifies to negative two and a half pounds per week. It makes sense because he's losing weight. All right, week two to week four. So his weight, I'm subtracting 221 and 219, and then four minus two in my denominator. Again, if you switch the order of those, that's totally fine. You should still get the same answer. So 221 minus 219 gives me two, four minus two gives me two. So that was gaining one pound per week because it's a positive one. From week four to week six, for the weight, I'm subtracting 215 minus 221, and then six minus four in my denominator. So that gives me negative six over two, which is negative three pounds per week. And then from week six to week eight, 215 minus 215 in my numerator, eight minus six in the denominator, so that's zero over two. So that means he had no change in his weight for these two weeks because his rate of change is zero. Okay, now we're looking at some graphs. So number of miles driven after each hour of a road trip from hour one to hour four. So if we're looking at the rate between those two points, you can do this by drawing your right triangle and finding your slope that way, or you can subtract the two points. Either way works because we've got the graph in front of us. So like if I was doing it on my graph, the rise, I'm going from 0 to 160. So rise would be 160. And the run, I'm going from 0 to 4. So that would be 4. So 160 divided by 4 should give me 40. Let's see if we get the same thing doing our slope formula. So if you're doing your slope formula, your y values are 160 and 60. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. It says hour one, and I was looking at hour zero. So it would be these two points. One is halfway between zero and two. So I'm going from 60 to 160, so my rise would be 100. And my run is going from one to four, so that's three. Okay, so let's see if we get the same thing with our slope formula. If I look at my y values, 160 minus 60 would go in my numerator. And then 4 minus 1 is going to go in my denominator. So 100 over 3, which is the same thing we got by counting. And that would simplify to about 33.3 .3 miles per hour. It's going to be 33.3 .3 repeating. All right, from hour 8 to hour 10, again, you can draw your triangle or you can use your slope formula. 
So our y values are 460, and then we kind of have to look right here. We're halfway between 360 and 460. So that means we need to go up by 50. So that would be 410 right here for that y value. So 460 minus 410, and then our x values are going from 8 to 10, so 10 minus 8. Okay, so 460 minus 410 would give me 50. 10 minus 8 is 2. So 25 miles per hour for that distance. Okay, change in the depth of a lake. So from 2000 to 2004. So right here is 2000. And then if we're going up to 2004, let's see, that y value, let's see, right here, halfway between 58 and 66. So that's eight spaces between those. So we need to go up by four. So halfway between them would be 62. And then we're counting by four. So this point up here would be 78. So we're subtracting 78 minus, I mean, 74 minus 62, not 74. Yeah, that should be 78. Sorry, y'all. So 78 minus 62. And then my x values, I'm going from 2004 to 2000, so 4 minus 0. So 78 minus 62 is going to give me... 16, 4 minus 0 is 4, so that is increasing by 4 feet per year. All right, from 2012 to 2016, so I'm going from 62 feet to, let's see, halfway between 42 and 50 would be 46. Let's see if I worked it right this time. <laughs> so 46 minus 62, or you could do 62 minus 46. Either way works. And then 2016 minus 2012 for your x values. So negative 16 over 4, which would give us negative 4 feet per year. All right, and then just a few word problems. Ava started a savings account with $500. After six months, her savings account was 731. Find the rate of change. Okay, so our money always goes on top. So we're subtracting $731 minus $500. The $731 was after six months, and then when she started, that was zero months. So in our denominator, we're subtracting six minus zero. If I subtract 731 minus 500, that should give me 231. 6 minus 0 should give me 6. And then if I divide those, 231 divided by 6 gives me $38.50 per month. All right, altitude of 36,000 feet when it begins, its descent for landing, and then 12 minutes into its descent, it's at 29,400 feet. So we're finding the rate of change. Okay, so at 12 minutes... We've gone down to 29,400. We started out at 36,000. So I'm going to do 29,400 minus 36,000. I always like to do like the second number first minus the first number given. Okay, so 29,400 was at 12 minutes. And then 36,000 was at the beginning. So that was zero minutes. 29,400 minus 36,000 should give us negative 6,600. 12 minus 0 should give us 12. So negative 6,600 divided by 12 should give us negative 550 feet per minute. Okay, 10 minutes into her workout, Laura had burned 98 calories. 25 minutes in, she had burned 272 calories. So if we're finding that rate of change. We're going to subtract the calories in our numerator. So 272 minus 98. 272 was at 25 minutes, 98 calories was at 10 minutes, so 25 minus 10 in our denominator. All right, so 272 minus 98 should give me 174, 25 minus 10 gives me 15, and then if I divide those, I should get 
11.6 calories per minute. All right, guys, I want you to pause your video and try number eight. All right, 16,200 in 2010 and 13,824 in 2016. So rate of change, I'm going to subtract those populations. I'm going to do 13,824 minus 16,200, and then 2016 minus 2010. So 13,824 minus 16,200 should give me negative 2,376, and then 2016 minus 2010 should give me 6. If I divide those, I get that we're decreasing by 396 people per year. So basically, tons of different applications, but in all of them, we're subtracting the y values in the numerator, subtracting the x values in the denominator. We're still just using that slope formula every single time. So this formula stays the same throughout. If you have questions about this after you watch this video, please come see me in zero blocks so that we can get those cleared up before we go into the next lesson next class.